Hey family, I'm so glad that you are tuning into our midweek service. Remember, our kingdom midweek absolutely matters. And I'm so thankful to God that you are here with us tonight. You know, if you've been watching us these last couple weeks, I did better wife, pastor did better husband, and tonight I'm doing better finances because you know our church believes in your family, your finances, your faith, and your fitness. And I'm so thankful that we belong to a church that is talking about things that are relevant, things that will actually change and benefit your life. Of course, the Bible is the most beneficial thing we could always have, but to know how to navigate through life and how to deal with life skills. And, you know, if God cares about our family, we should also care about our family. And part of caring about your family is caring about your finances. So please make sure that you tune in. Do not check out. Let other people know that this is on. I believe it's going to bless you, especially because of the season that we are in right now, being the holiday season. The pressure to spend is out there, and we're going to talk about that a little bit on tonight. Speaking of spending, there's no better way to spend your money than to give tithe and offering. Do you realize that because of your giving, we've been able to maintain this ministry for 20 years. We're going to be 20 years January 5th in 2025. We're looking forward to it. We are thrilled about it. Never did I dream that God would do all that he's done with this ministry. And it's because of you, your faithful giving and your commitment to being a part of the church is why we're still here. So I just want to remind you all that it's important that you give 10%. The Bible says to give your tithe or to bring your tithe or actually return your tithe to church. And that's 10% because God gave you the job. Therefore, he says, give me a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is 10. And also you should give an offering, whatever that is between you and the Lord. You guys that are giving, thank you so much for being consistent and faithful. And I know you're seeing God show up strong in your life when it comes to finances. And if you're not giving that much, it's okay. You can start right now. We thank you that you are allow, allowing your finances to support what we're doing in the kingdom of God. And it truly is because of you that we are still here, still strong, still streaming, still have our doors open, still providing great classes and resources and teaching like we're going to teach tonight is because of your giving and your finances. So thank you. Make sure that you give to that number on the screen. Like I always say, you can get your phone out and give to 77977 with the letters KIVCC. You can always go to our website, Kingdom Church, click the give tab. You can give there as well. And as always, no matter what day it is, it could be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you're watching this for the first time and you haven't give, given, make sure that you give. Also, Pastor will be back, be back in the building on Sunday. If you uh, missed service last Sunday, I enjoy teaching so much. And I can't wait till this coming Sunday. I know it's going to be another blessed service. So let me just pray for you as you give. Father, I thank you for those that are faithfully giving to your house. God, thank you, Lord, that you allow them to see that you are true to your word, that you multiply what is sown to your house. Father, I thank you that every need is met, that our people will not be in lack, and they will see you as a God of more than enough. In the name of Jesus, we agree and say amen. All right, amen. So let's get into our teaching tonight. I'm so excited to have some financial advisors, licensed financial advisors, and not only are they uh, financial advisors, they've been faithful members of our church and great friends and advisors of Pastor and myself, and that is Elder Paul and Elder Sydney Neely, and they're going to bless us with great information tonight. Elder Paul, can you tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks uh, so much for having us here tonight. And so, uh, so Sydney and I, you know, we've been uh, licensed financial advisors for coming up on 18 years. Uh, we have a couple different locations across the valley, and uh, we just we love educating and helping people about money. And there's a lot of uh, uh, truths that people don't get to learn about money growing up. Like I don't come from money, Cindy doesn't come from money. Uh, we don't went to school. Nobody taught us about those basics, and so uh, we have had a passion for many many years to be able to educate people on financial decisions and how important they are uh, in their life. And so we're excited to be able to share some of those things here tonight. Yeah, Elder Sydney. Yes, well, congrats again on 20 years coming up. We love it. We love this church so much. And yes, we're passionate about financial education and really about what the Bible says about how to honor God, how to honor our families, how to honor each other with our finances. Jesus talked about money a lot. Yes. And so it's great that we get to do kingdom work uh, and business too. Yeah, that's true because, you know, First Timothy 
uh, 1 and 6 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And for some reason, the church got it twisted and thinks that money is what's evil. And it's not money that's evil. It's the love of it. And when you love Jesus and you love his ability to bless you, you don't have a problem talking about money or giving money because, like you said, money's mentioned in the Bible a lot. What would you say is your biggest uh, thing that you've learned through the Bible concerning money? Well, uh, one, it's interesting you think of the, the, the love of money, right? It's, if money was so evil, wouldn't the devil doubled your income a long time ago? Uh, amen. Right? That's <laughs> so really good. We would have a lot more if it was so evil, right. right? And so one of it's just a mindset. And what the Bible talks often about, right, is, especially with the story of the talents in Matthew, right, is that money is a tool. Uh, and a lot of times money is viewed as restrictive, um, that it, it's controlling you. People have a bad relationship with money. And so I think uh, really reading the Bible, understanding that money is a tool to be leveraged and used for the kingdom, for great things. And a lot of times, again, growing up, I always thought money was, uh, it was just for stuff and things. It right. was like if you made more money, you could have more stuff. Sure. You could get the nicer car. You could get the nicer house. You could do all these things. Right, but when you understand that you can leverage money to buy peace, yeah. joy, I mean, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kind of, we've been married without money, and we've been married with money, right. and the fruits of the Spirit are more in our house now wow. when our finances are in order, when you have things like a budget, right? God is a God of order, That's good. and when we have our money out of order, it creates chaos, it creates confusion, yes. you know, God is not the author of confusion, so if we're confused about how money works and if we have enough to pay our bills and are we going to get through this it's just the stress that that can put on you as a husband you as a father you as a community you as a church member yeah right people want to hide when tithe talks because it's like i i, I don't even know if i if i have enough gas to get home how sure. am i going to tithe so sure. if we come in and we're stressed all the time we don't really get to receive what god wants in our life because we can't see past that veil of the finance is blocking us on a day-to-day -day basis. Wow, Elder, that is brilliant because a lot of times we say in church, money can't buy peace, money can't buy joy. But in reality, it can. Absolutely. Because when you have enough coming in or you've budget, this is what I believe. I believe that God provides and that there's people within our congregation, people that you may know in your life, they have the money, they don't have the budget. So they're mismanaging what God has given them and then they don't have joy, they don't have peace, they, they're not able to buy those things because it's chaos, and a lot of times the money is spent before you even get it. So, Elder Sydney, how can someone start with a budget? Let's just say someone's watching right now and they're thinking, okay, how can I start today figuring out what a budget is and what it looks like? Sure, so one of the easiest things to do is to decipher between our needs and our wants. And so there's a lot of statistics out there that tell us exactly what you're saying, that we spend money on things that we like and things that are important to us. Uh, statistically, the average family spends $2,000 a year on coffee and soda, according to recent statistics. Wow. Almost $2,000 a year on coffee and soda. So just redirecting things like that, that it's a few bucks here, five bucks here, 10 bucks here, 20 bucks here, well, that's almost 200 dollars a month. Uh, also personal appearance, um, gym memberships, a lot of things that we're doing on a monthly basis that we think we need, but really what are the things that we actually need? We need food, we need shelter, we need to tithe and give offering. Those are things that are, are important. Those are the foundations and then whatever's left over goes to those extra things. And I know we've joked about it a lot. We'll see people that they're struggling to maybe give or struggling to get ahead, but we've all got our nails done, our yes. hair done, yes. we're driving the fanciest car, yes. and I know that because we live in a society that is propagating us on a regular basis to buy stuff and things. I used to work in retail, which I know a lot of other people did too, and they call those end caps while you're walking through the aisles, they call those impulse buys because they're propagating us to impulsively buy things that we actually don't need. And so what are our wants, what are our needs, and how can we say, hey, it's not a forever, but just for now, what can I say no to for a season? Because when we're faithful over a few things, yes. then God will make us ruler over many things. So there was a long time where we ate, you know, like a lot of people, quesadillas and rice and beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or breakfast for, uh, for dinner, for like yeah, you were talking about the right. other day, pancakes and uh, yeah. eggs, and because it was just for a season 
and God helped multiply what we had over time. It didn't happen right away, but in the beginning, and it was hard, it wasn't easy, um, but we said no to a lot of those needs so that we could make sure we were respectful and honorable over our wants. Yeah, or excuse me, we said no to the wants so that we were respectful and honorable over the needs. That's yeah. right. That is so good. And those end caps, yeah. I, you know, when you're in line waiting and they have all these things, I, I, I just recently, I was there waiting to check out, and I'm considering buying my dog a toy. Now, I don't even, I love my dog, but it's, I don't buy my dog things, but for whatever reason, I thought, well, Sugar That's might cute. like this. And I'm like, what am I doing? But those are impulse buys. Yeah. You know, you talked about budgeting, mm -hmm. and you talked about tithing. Mm -hmm. Elder Paul, can you just briefly talk about the importance of tithing? Because listen, tithing is not something we made up. It is a God law. It is a principle. It is a supernatural thing that happens when you give offering, where God literally multiplies your seed. I mean, corporations do it. They don't call it tithing, but they do give 10%, but they're utilizing that principle, right? So can you talk a little bit about the importance of tithing and what that actually does financially? Yeah, so for, for Cindy and I personally, right, it, uh, the tithing was so important to be our first fruits, and the Bible talks about that, but what it does is it fully shows that we're trusting God. Right, and so it's instantly going, this is all your money anyway, right? And what's so crazy is people have a record of how they are with money, right? Right. It's like, you're not good with it. You might as well give it to someone who can bless it and multiply it because you've had all 100% right. and you can't, you can't manage, manage it, it. That's right. right? So you might as well give it to somebody who has the ability to multiply it and will multiply it across the board. And so it was just a non-negotiable for us. And uh, for anybody that's maybe wondering will it will it work it's just just trust us and trust god that your life will change there's just stuff that starts to shift the story after story and i know you and pastor have story after story but like sydney and i would it would be a choice to like tithe or eat or whatever and yeah. we were like hey our our choice was to tithe yeah. and then literally we would go to our mail and like grandma would send us a hundred dollars just out of nowhere yes. and, and the amount of stories that can, it almost became laughable to where sydney i'd be like Look what happens when we tithe. Right. Here's what's going to happen. And right. so just knowing that, you know, it's good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, and just trusting that. And so if we're going to trust God to heal our sickness, yep. to heal, to get us a promotion at our job, yep. we pray for all of these things for God to do, and he's asked us to do one thing. Yeah. And so I'm going, if I'm going to trust him to heal my sickness or help me get this promotion or help me with this new house or help me with all these things, surely. Yes. I can trust him with 10%. And so we just budgeted off 90% as our 100%. Wow. It was just a simple decision of like, this hasn't even come into our household. 90% right. is 100%. And all we can show is the fruit that has come from that mm -hmm. over the years. And then making a decision to manage that 90% yeah. are the best way possible that we can. So that's our experience with tithing across the board. Yeah, that's so good. And it's so important and so true that we as believers like Elder said, we trust God for everything else. We trust God for miracles, signs and wonders. But when it comes to our checkbook and it comes to our money, we're like, I don't know, God, I got this. Where the truth is, we don't. I know I didn't. I, I can remember where we would get money and it'd be like, it would disappear. And you didn't even know what you spent it on. But that's because the enemy is a seed eater. When God gives you finances, it's considered a seed. And the seed eater will come and eat away at it at things you don't need, things you don't well, probably shouldn't want, but you want them. <laughs> yes. But, you know, that sort of thing. And I get that. And I think it's so important, especially now, with the holidays. I was just in the mall. I don't go to the mall often, but I was in the mall. The lights, the bells, the music, the sounds, you know. Y'all know I like Ross, you know, but not the mall. But it's so enticing. And it just makes you just want to, for some you feel like you've got plenty of money I don't know if it's the environment. I don't know if it's because it looks so beautiful or fancy. And you figure, I'm here. I might as well. Elder Sydney, what, do you, what would you say to those that might be like oh, me, a woman, and I do give in to the, it's Christmas, the pressure of wanting to give and wanting to gift and wanting to buy stuff for people we don't even like, yes. let's be honest, or kids that don't deserve it, that part, you know. What do, we, what do you say to someone that, can stop that and look at Christmas a little different. 
Sure, I think we have to be objective about what's going on with the system that we're a part of. So we already talked about, you know, the retail stores, the Christmas season. Um, there was a statistic that came out last year that said we spent almost a trillion dollars on holiday spending last year. Wow. Um, and so the average American that goes into debt during the holidays goes into debt over a thousand dollars. If they have a credit card with an average credit card interest rate, that's going to take them 110 months to pay that one credit card off for that one Christmas and then we're doing it again the coming Christmas as well and credit card interest rates that interest accrues against us daily so every day we wake up poorer than we were the day before and so for me because I love to buy stuff and things as much as the next person uh, I you know years ago when I found this out I'm like wait a minute like they are getting our money and then multiplying it against us every single day and then they're making me feel bad or excited about buying gifts um, I'm not going to participate in this anymore. It's not good for me. It's not good for other people. I need to be honest and realistic about what can I actually do this year. And this year doesn't mean I'm going to be in the same place next year. It's right. just this year. Right. And so we really encourage a lot of our clients to think about, hey, what are some memories that we could make around the holidays rather than gifts? You know, could we go for a picnic? Could we go for a hike? Um, could we bake something together and give cookies out as presents to the neighbors and extend family rather than feeling like we have to give gifts to people that we see a couple times a year right. and like you said we don't really like that much anyways maybe right. right so what are some alternative things that we could do and make memories mm -hmm. rather than make getting into more debt yeah that's really good that's really, you know it's so important and so true that we look at look at how the system works against us monetarily and I was telling you know Elder Paul and Sydney are my financial advisors. I let them know I just recently consolidated some of my credit card debt because it was a cheaper interest rate. You know, I learned this from you all. I got my credit card debt, which wasn't much, but it was enough to put in one pile. And it was 11% interest versus the 22 and 23 and 24% that I didn't know because we don't read the fine lines. We just take a card and do it. And, and, and then there's one card. So I'm like, okay, good. All my credit cards are in one place. No, no, this one credit card reached out to me, said my payment was due, and I said, payment? There is no payment. It was a $60 fee for, for nothing. And I had to make the payment of $60. Of course, they said I could break it up, of course, because they want that interest to compound against me. And that's just another trick of how it works. You know, I was talking to you guys earlier also about those new things that are out, like, is it Klarna and that you could like pay over time. It doesn't feel like a credit card, but it comes on like an app and it says, the moment I consolidated y'all, I got these, all these ads about, I've got buying power. And I'm not gonna lie, it felt good. I'm like, wow, I've got buying or spending power. There you go. Spending power. And I'm like, I'm powerful. But then I realized it was a pay month to month situation. How do you guys feel about those? Is that like credit cards too, even though it's on like an app? What, Explain that a little bit, Elder Paul. Yeah, all that stuff runs on your credit, right? Because they're approving you for things. It's like a new fancy layaway is kind of uh, okay. how that works, right? But you get the stuff. Yeah, the yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Correct, okay. but that's, they, they give you the stuff now. And so if people default on things, I mean, they get your name, your social, all that stuff. So it will report on your credit for sure. And so all of these introductory offers, yes. right, credit – Credit card companies and debt companies know this time of year people get emotional about things, yeah. all that. So they will put introductory offers like 0%. Yes. Um, there's points, there's cash back, there's miles, all that. And it sounds really, really, really good, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of fine print. We always say the large print giveth, the small print taketh, <laughs> right? And So that's why they see when you got, hey, you got a pre-approved for the blah, blah, blah card, you'll get $25 off today. And I'm like, they're no. trying to get you to run it through their credit program because they're going to give you 20 bucks back right. or something like that. And what most people don't understand is it's a 0% interest. If And let's say it's 12 months. If you do not pay that off in 12 months, right. they're going to accrue all the interest and add it at the end. So if we don't pay that off. So it's not like we're paying anything. Correct. Basically. So And the reason why this is so important, you all, because God gave you the job. He's giving you money. Everybody, uh, we're blessed, and our church, majority of our church members work. So it's not that you don't have the money. It's that we're not doing right by the money. 
And so I don't want you to get in more trouble thinking these things work when it's really going against you. You might not feel it now, but in a few years, you're going to realize, wow, I'm paying, this, this debt's never going away. It's just piling up and piling up and piling up. And then when it comes to doing things you really need, like a home, or maybe you want to get another vehicle, and you've got all these dings against your credit and all these payments, well, then there's a reality of you really don't, you don't have spending power because you bought things that you necessarily don't need with it. So what would you, so I, you said about making memories for Christmas. Um, you know, I love the adrenaline rush of people opening a gift. I love the adrenaline rush of finding the perfect gift. Actually, this year, I'm doing something different. As much as I love to give gifts, but I'm doing a little different thing this year, and I'm talking myself into it, it's going to be okay. Because I've got my beautiful grandchildren, and honestly, y'all, there's nothing more I could buy them. Anything Fisher Price or anybody has made, we have, we have. Pray for me. But now, <laughs> but now I'm getting better because I've got people in my world, like Elder Paul, Elder Sydney, that I talk to honestly. You said that. Be honest, honestly about finances. Elder Sydney is my armor bearer, which means that she helps me out in the back. She takes care of me, makes sure I have what I need. She's praying for me. She's making sure that, I'm, that I don't have any issues or wants when I'm serving the people of God. It's a very important role, and I thank God for her in my life. But while she's back there, I'm also being honest. I spent too much this weekend. I did some, like just confessions in the back room, right? Confessions in the closet, confessions. <laughs> and then I told her the Holy Spirit told me, Whenever I go to a store, don't spend more than $40. Remember? Now, the problem was I had to stop going to 20 stores. <laughs> but, but I was honest about me having an issue of the impulse buy, the adrenaline rush of buying, the making you feel good of buying it. And I think it's important that, that it's, it's being a good steward. I really believe that if you cannot be faithful over little, God will not make you faithful over much. And I know for me, if I want God to increase my finances, he tests you at levels and makes sure that, yeah, you got an increase, but don't spend your increase, right? So, so with some more advice before we close, because this is so good. And, I, and I, I told Elder Paul and Elder Sydney, I'm going to do financial literacy classes next year. I think it's very important as we come into wealth. I believe we're going to be coming into wealth next year. I believe finances are going to change. I believe there'll be more cash flow to come. What I don't want to have happen is more comes in and we're spending and we're the same position we are in now. The devil is a lie. Right. Because I know it's been tough financially for everybody. Sure. Right? So just some last advice. Going into the new year, mm -hmm. what would you say would be a rule to start new year? You know, new year, new you. What would Elder Paul and Elder Sydney, either way, both of you. Sure. What would be the first thing to do, first of the year, I'm going to start to do what with my finances? A great goal is to start to save at least 10 to 15% of our income. So maybe we can't do that right away, but that's really the benchmark in terms of financial planning. What's the minimum that we should be putting away in terms of saving and investing? So um, we've talked a lot about tithing and offering. You know, So we're talking about the 90% that's left over, right? 10 to 15% of our income. We want to start to put towards saving and investing. And we're big proponents of, again, being realistic and objective, and it's not all always the fun thing to talk about, but maybe we need to get another job. Yeah. Maybe we need to, you know, Paul and I, for a long time, we worked seven days a week mm -hmm. and we had multiple jobs. I used to be a teacher a long, long, long time ago before I got into finance. And so I would teach and then bartend and waitress and work in retail yeah, when I needed to. We did a well. paper you know delivery the paper every, every day. day. Every day. It was horrible. <laughs> right? We've, so we've it was so bad. For 220 bucks a week. We get up at midnight and deliver them at two or three in the morning and then go to work after that. Yeah. But I know we have that in common because when you and pastor, like you talked about when you were a younger couple, you would do night shift yes. and then he would do morning yep. shift and then day shift. Yes. And so we did a lot of that for a long time. And I think if we can make a new year's resolution to get, to get started now, but to have that new year where we say, look, we are going to get out of debt. We are going to save 10 to 15% of our income. And if we have to work extra jobs for a little bit to make that happen, we're believing God that we're going to have opportunities, that we're going to have open doors. It's still the year of the open door. Yeah. Anything can happen between November and December. We can't write this year off. And what happens if we really do want to buy those extra gifts, 
gifts, well, maybe we need to get another stream of income for that. Maybe we need to start a business. Maybe yeah. we need to start an entrepreneurial venture. Maybe we need to learn how to sell some things. You know, you talk about the um, garage sales or what can we get rid of, you know? Yep. So it's not just what can we spend, but it's also what can we save and what, how can we make more money? Yes. And we live in America, which is, you know, we have a lot of opportunity to do a lot of different things in terms of income producing yep. um, activities. And I think that those are things we should pray about and be creative about um, in terms of our money management. Because the Lord says he gives us power to gain wealth. Absolutely. Right. So he gives us that power to get the wealth. I just got an email uh, or a text about somebody wanting me to do Amazon reviews and for $200 or something. I didn't really read it, but I considered it. Mm -hmm. well, you're an influencer, yeah. so yeah. you have that influence. And, and that platform. is something I use as another stream of income mm -hmm. is that, you know, and just there, there's ways to make money all the time. I'm always telling my younger kids too, I'm going to get to you, Elder Paul, but my younger kids that work, I'm like, listen, while you have no children, go work. Like I'm always telling my sons, someone's hiring here, someone's hiring. I'm always trying to give them plugs to go work and make money somewhere because there's always money to be made. And I think that's another thing culturally that I'm believing God we're going to start to implement where people are going to want to go make money and not sit around and hope money comes to you through the lottery and things. Go out there and get the money. Right. There's money all around us. Elder yes. Paul. Well, I was just going to say I agree with everything Cindy just said. And uh, I want to let people know on the other side of making a decision to do this, there is a lot of freedom that comes from a budget. Mm -hmm. And do you know, most people think that going through their finances, that it's going to be restrictive, that it's going to be letting them down, that it's going to be hard to deal with. But on the other side, there is a lot of freedom that comes from it, right? Instead of swiping and praying, <laughs> right? Please be approved. Yeah, Please be approved. when well, you tap and pray, right? But it's, tap and pray. <laughs> it's one of those things to where it's like there was even guilt that would be, it's like we would go out to dinner and we knew we shouldn't be going out to dinner. So even though you're doing the thing, yeah. in the back of your head, you're like, yeah. this is... We order drinks and appetizers, yeah. and the, we shouldn't be doing this right now. Right. And so we found that even when we were spending money we didn't have, that was for the enjoyment. For that, it was still not even as good as it could be. But then when it was budgeted, we went out. Our experiences yeah. were so much better yeah. because we were like, we worked for this. We earned, earned this. it. Yeah. We know this is in our budget. Yeah. We can order this, and we can have a great night. Right. And so it, instead of viewing it as like restrictive and in bondage, we want to let you know the freedom that's on the other side yeah. of owning your financial decisions is just huge. Yeah. And we've been proof of that over the years of knowing, making those decisions. So you just make a decision to do that, print up your bank statements, yeah. see what's coming out. Be honest. The average, the uh, most recent stat I have, and then I'm done, is the $133 a month more in subscriptions people are spending than they think. Wow. They're off by $133. Wow. And so there's a lot of things you signed up for as you haven't got, but we don't want to look at it, yeah. right? It's like playing hide and seek with a kid, right? You're like, if I don't see you, you don't see That's me, right? right? So we don't want to look at it. Yeah. And so we're just like, okay, well, let's look at it. Yeah. And then we can address the, the, the issue because pastor always says, well, we can't identify, we can't crucify. That's right. And so if we can identify these things, then we can absolutely nail those things down and have a, have a great abundance uh, fill, filled life. That's so good. You know, abundance life, God has given us an abundance life. For you that are working, especially my two parent homes, God, that's an abundance of money coming in. And if we could just manage it, give our 10%, try to put 10 away. I know that's a big reach for somebody. Start with put something away. My grandma used to say you should always have something for a rainy day, right? Just something. Even if it's change. I know people don't do change anymore. But if you just get change, start putting change away, you have something. It's getting in the habit of putting it away and not spending. And then getting into the mindset of, God, you are giving us more than enough. I'm just being pressured by the world to do, 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 go, 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 bye, bye, bye. You know, right now, I'm sure ladies look in your closets, plenty of options, plenty of shoes. Now, I mean, let's, we're, we are blessed. If you look, I tell people all the time, God, more than enough is in your garage. And, and I was looking at all the pots and pans I've accumulated over the years. We, I need probably three pots and pans. My cabinets are full of pots and pans. Well, that's how most of our lives are. And I think if we just manage it, budget it, get rid of what we don't need and only keep what we, okay, get rid, rid of, what of what we don't we want <laughs> and keep it what we need, it changes things. I promise you, my grandchildren, like I said, who I have blessed, 
and who have everything you can think of that's been made as a toy, were playing with boxes in my garage. Plain boxes. They were coloring them. They were designing them. They were painting. I said, you know what? Everyone's getting a box this year for Christmas because it is about the experience. It's not about the things. And that, again, gave me my idea to how I'm going to bless my children this year for Christmas. It's going to be a little different. You know, I hope you were blessed by this. We care about your family. We care about your finances. We're not, when we say give your 10%, we're not trying to take money from you. We're trying to get money to you. When we have um, uh, programs like this, we're not trying to manipulate. We're trying to let you know there's a system. And if we learn how to work the system, the system can work for you. And supernaturally, God will multiply and increase and give you more than enough. I speak that over your life in Jesus' name, that you have a life of wealth, of abundance, and that you have prosperity, not just in your health, not just in your marriage, not just in your mind, but prosperity in your pockets in Jesus' name. You've got it. You just have to make sure and say, where am I spending it? And is it worth being spent on? Because I do believe that God gives us all more than enough. And if that is not you, I speak that over your life in Jesus' name. You will get a job. You will get more income. You will go get more. If you've got teenagers living with you and they're not doing anything extracurricular and no one's working, make them go work. Get the, have them get up and get a job and have them pay you a little something. Teach them these skills now because there's money to be made everywhere. Amen? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for those that are watching. I thank you, Lord God, that they will see finances in their life, that they will flow. Father, help us all learn how to manage what you've given us so we can see that you are the God of more than enough. And, Father, we thank you that as we bless those for Christmas, we will not forgive that you are the reason for the season. And that will make sure that we keep you first in everything. We give you praise. We give you glory. God, I ask that you bless Elder Paul and Elder Sydney, that their business continues to bless, be blessed, and flow in abundance. And God, I praise you that you are true to your word, that you care about us, and you are the God that gives. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. I hope you were blessed. Hey, listen, if you don't know Jesus, good time to ask him into your life. It's very easy to get saved. All you do is say, Lord, I believe in my heart. Confess in my mouth that you are Lord. He becomes the Savior of your life. You can also, if you're backslidden and you've been away from Jesus, he's married to you, meaning that he does not give up on you. He will not throw you away. He loves you, and he wants you back in relationship with him. You could do that right now by saying, God, I love you. Forgive me, and I want to be back in fellowship with you. Father, thank you that you never leave me. I left you, but God, right now, I'm sorry. And I want relationship with you again. And just like that, rededicate it. If you did that, let us know by sending us an email or sending us a DM or a message on the YouTube as you're watching this. And I'm just so thankful that angels in heaven rejoice because of that choice you made today. All right, I love y'all. We'll see you on Sunday. Have a blessed week. Be smart about your finances. And remember, we are kingdom.